myself Give me a what I was to take clowns King's crown Hi, hello, <laughs> Hey guys How are you all doing today? So I'm again back with my opinionated ass with an opinionated video I hope you like this one and if you do don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to be honest I actually prefer girl crush more than bubblegum so I might be a little biased. But even so I think people who whine about how girl crush is starting to become more dominant than bubblegum pop and are asking for a return of cute concepts are getting a little hypocritical. Don't get me wrong, I love seeing and hearing bubblegum pop. But cute concepts have dominated more than half of K-pop for the better half of each generation, starting from Wonder Girls and Girls Generation. Till to this day we have many girl groups who are still doing the cute concepts and are getting extremely praised for it. I realize that the sudden popularity of teen crush may surprise or even turn a few k-poppers salty, mainly those who got in pop mainly because of the cute concept. But to be honest with you I just really feel that cute concepts have been done to hell and back at this point. There was honestly a period where everywhere you looked around the industry, you have found girl groups doing cutesy concepts. And it's not even like cute concept has just evaporated either, since we still have girl groups like Cherry Bullet and Weakly who are doing the cutesy concepts and are very good at it. Not to mention other groups like Stacy and Rocket Punch also take up more cute concepts than Teen Crush. So talking about bubblegum pop as if you don't get enough of those or as if no one is doing it is quite wrong and hypocritical to be honest. Especially since we all know that cute concepts would never go out of K-pop. So hating on Teen Crush just cause it's more popular currently is really not justified. Before getting into the topic, I'd just like to say that we're only gonna talk about rappers for now, and also that the show is only getting started. It is still extremely early in the 4th gen to determine who would lead, who would leave and who would stay. But still counting in the groups that we have today, I partly agree with this opinion. I feel like each and every generation always leaves its traces or footmarks in stone as well as the upcoming gens and honestly, you can't disagree that anyone will ever be able to fill the void of rappers like the ones mentioned if they ever leave the scene. For me at least, they wouldn't. And even though the 4th gen does and will definitely have more rappers who'd probably shake up the stages with their own different and astounding charisma and charms, I don't think they'd ever be able to take 3rd gen's place. Cause firstly, we are talking of two entirely different generations. If they were gonna be all the same sounding, same concept groups through and through it wouldn't have been called a whole new generation. Secondly, each generation has its own specialities, and like I said though it is quite early to start predicting things already, maybe we'd get some other speciality in 4th gen other than rapping. But for the time being, let's just see what happens. I feel as if this doesn't get talked about a lot, even when it is true. I've really liked it see ever since the start and I'm sorry if you're a midzy and this offends you. But Yuna is not a baby. Yes she is young, but not to the extent where everyone practically treats her as if was born yesterday. Yes, it's definitely allowed and probably even popular to brag about your maknies or the young members of a group and how talented and or successful they are at such young ages. But the way, a few midzies and Yuna stands act as if Yuna is the only one as much talented for her age kinda makes me uncomfortable, probably cause I'm a multiston, and I stand a lot of other idols who are extremely young and extremely talented, and personally I think there is no best in the K-pop industry. Every idol is a thousand times more talented than we viewers stands will probably be, which just more solidifies the fact that we should not compare any of them. But coming back to the topic, I find it really weird how you can't even compliment Yuna on any other trope other than her dancing. Even complimenting her voice or her visuals or how beautiful or chic she looks in an era of variety show or anything else seems to set some midsies and Yuna stands on edge. Cause apparently, according to some people, calling a person, even though they they are young or underage beautiful, makes you a pedophile. Now, before y'all talk about this, I do realize Yuna is one of the youngest idols active in the 4th gen of K-pop, and even though being a minor, she is immensely sexualized. Something I do not support at all, not just for Yuna but all idols collectively. 
It's okay to call an idol or person in general hot, pretty, beautiful handsome etc. Regardless of age, but the way some fans take it to a whole new and cringy level, making 18 plus FM versus and AS disgusts me. Even more so with idols like Yuna, who are only just minors, especially if they aren't even 18 yet. But that really doesn't give anyone the right to always infantilize the girl. I remember a few times when JYP made Yuna wear crop tops and heels, which somehow made fans lose their shit over how JYP is sexualizing Yuna, which is kinda hypocritical since the only person who thinks someone would sexualize a man or woman just because they wear a crop top is the one who is sexualizing the said person. I wouldn't say the best, but yes, it is one of the best. Personally when talking about collabs I always find out out of people talking about BTS, Blackpink, Monster X etc. And though they do deserve all the love they get, I feel like rarely anyone talks about this collab. I genuinely like this collab, from the soft visuals to the line distributions and the production visuals, just the whole collab to be honest. And if SM wasn't a female dog, this song would've probably gotten the shine and glamour and praise it deserves. I felt like this one was one of the few collabs where the artists genuinely had fun while making the song and the whole interaction was really wholesome. There was a language barrier, but even through that, the interaction was just really sweet in general. I really feel like Don't Need Your Love is a seriously good song which just got buried under the other songs even though it should have been talked about so much more. I may even be biased but if you haven't listened to this song, you really should give it a try. It definitely won't disappoint you. I'd like to talk about this in a little more detail so buckle up your belt kids. To be honest this opinion is something a lot of antis or just K-pop haters think about K-pop and K-popers in general, which is kinda justiciable, maybe 1%, because of how quickly K-pop became a mainstream genre because of BTS, and it is still blowing up more and more everyday. So it is understandable how outsiders might make such assumptions. But is K-pop really overrated or overhyped? First, coming to the musical influence and sound, is it similar to West Pop? Not completely but they do have their similarities. But one of the main factor that distinguishes K-pop from American pop is just how diverse their visuals and filmography of music videos is. I personally believe that in that aspect K-pop is quite superior to West Pop. I can honestly name dozens of music videos where the sets and production was flawlessly jaw-dropping and just plain mesmerizing. This is something that I can never quite find myself praising American pop for. Most of the time I just grow really disappointed of how repetitive some scenes are or how much green screen is used. Granted that K-pop uses it too but we still have music videos like the HYLT MV, Stay Gold MV and many more. I also think K-pop is quite diverse in the musical sense compared to American pop. Nowadays I can mainly see American pop artists talking about love and heartbreak most of the time. Also West pop is quite filled up with the trap genre recently. But in K-pop you can find a variety of genres as per your taste in music. There's bubblegum pop, girl crush or boy crush, hip hop, R&B, pop, pop rock, etc. You can never find songs like those of Twice or Eyes Ones in West Pop, just like you can't find a song like WAP or One talking of LGBTQ+, world problems or important issues in K-pop since they are quite controversial to talk about in the genre. Now coming to the looks part, I think a lot of people say this without even know how an idol goes through nerve-wracking training for years on end learning about the perfect pitching, executing choreos perfectly and rapping with a smooth flow. So to be honest we don't stand their faces, we stand them for their talent and their music. It really amuses me how if you just talk about a k-pop idol's visual to a west pop they go ranting about k-pop just being popular for having pretty faces. Even if you take their performances in account, the way k-pop idols perform is quite different from west pop. For first they have bone crashing choreographies 90% of the time. And let me tell you something, American pop would not be able to incorporate that. Cause for a first, they don't raise teens to compete with other jewels in an industry filled with gemstones. You can't tell me that any and every American pop artist would be able to execute choreographies the likes of ITZY, 80s, The Boys or NCT has as smoothly as the respective idols. 
So yes, K-pop is very distinct and unique in that part. They always try to captivate the viewers with everything they have and if not for their music. Since not everyone has similar musical preferences, each group does deserve a round of applause for their hard work. So, to sum it up, I think both genre has its specialities as well as its downs. You can listen to any of them as per your want, just don't aggressively bash the other genre just cause you don't like it or listen to it. So that'd be the end of today's video, hope you liked it and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you in my next video and I hope you stay just as wonderfully you till then. Bye.